first of all, I'd like to thank you so much for tuning in to this message. I'd like to ask you to please bow your heads as I lead us in a word of prayer. Gracious Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your love and your guidance. I ask you, Lord, to please give us the strength to keep moving forward and open your scripture through the Holy Spirit that we may have an understanding of your word, that it may empower us for our new level of faith. In Jesus' name, amen. The scripture we'll be reading today is found in 1 Samuel chapter 1, and it says this. Now, there was a certain man of Ramathiosophim of Mount Ephraim, and his, and his name was Elkanah, and the son of Jeroham, and the son of Elihu, and the son of Tohu, and the son of Suf, and, and Ephrathite. And he had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah, and the name of the other, Penina. And Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. And when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Penina his wife and to all her sons and her daughters portions. But unto Hannah he gave worthy portion, for he loved Hannah, but the Lord has shut up her womb. The Lord has shut up her womb. And her adversaries and her adversaries, her adversary also provoked her sore for to make her fret because the Lord has shut up her womb. And as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her. Who provoked her? Benina provoked her, mocking her because she can't give kids to her husband, but she can, the same man. Therefore she wept and did not eat and said, Elkanah, her husband, to her Hannah, Why weepest thou, and why eatest thou not, and why is thy heart grieved? Am, am not I better than the... Am I not better to thee than ten sons? So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh, and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest sat upon the seat by a post of the temple of the Lord, and she was in bitterness of soul, and prayed unto the Lord, and wept sore. And she vowed a vow, and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thy handmaid, and remember me, and not forget thy handmaid, but will, the, will give unto thee handmaid a man-child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall, shall no razor come upon us. So now you've got to understand is that Hannah was in a situation that she... She, she wanted a child. She wanted to give the child to the one that she loved so much, her husband. And she said, Lord, I will, give, I will even give him back to you. All I want is just a child, and I will give him back to you. Very important. Verse 12. And it came to pass, as she continued praying before the Lord, that Eli marked her mouth. Now Hannah, she spake in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli, the priest, thought she had been drunken. And Eli said unto her, How long would thou be drunken? Watch this. A priest said, How long would you, thou be drunken? But away thy, away thy wine from thee. Verse 15. And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord. I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Count not thine handmaid for a daughter of Belial, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. Verse 20, the last verse, it says, Wherefore it came to pass, when the time was come about after Hannah had conceived, that she bare a son. Can we all say amen? She bare a son and called his name Samuel, saying, because I have asked him of the Lord. The message, the title of the message today is, I was born with grace. Grace was designed, was designed specifically for me. I was born with grace. Now, there's only three points that I want to share with you with this topic. is because I believe that it relates to the situations that we're going through, trying to find our spiritual walk in life, in church, and in families, and with our own individual relationship with God. And grace plays a big part in our movement and in our walk, especially to those and to us who has lost hope in a movement with God. 
I was born with grace. Hannah, who was a spiritual woman, a good woman, a godly woman, who, who married a rich man. She had everything, but she was barren. The Bible says that God shut up her womb, meaning that it was God that made sure that she wasn't able to give birth. Hmm. Why would a God do this? So the first point I want to share with you is that uh, we got to understand is that Hannah, even though Hannah couldn't bear a son, she was actually mocked by people. Let me say this again. Even though she was weak in certain areas that she couldn't bear a son, the uh, Penina was mocking her because she couldn't have a, have a baby. Let me bring it deeper. Even though you have weakness in your life and you come to church trying to find God, there are people who are still not going to provoke you of your history, but they don't understand that was your past, but they can't see to go past your past. Oh, amen. So this is what I want to share with you, how this relates so much with us right now, because even though People who are hindering you to be one with God because of what you did in the past, let them dwell in your past because that's their present. Oh, amen. So our past is not our, our present is not our past. Even though if they want to live in our past, that's their prerogative. That's not our prerogative. Our, 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 our struggle, our challenge is to make sure our present becomes our future. Mm. Or our future becomes the present. We keep looking ahead instead of looking behind. So one, so my first point I want to tell you, my brothers and sisters, whether in church or whether in your jobs or whether in families, especially with families, because they're the ones that can hit you really hard only because you have let your walls down. Mm. Whether where, wherever you have haters, let your haters be your elevators. Oh, amen. Let your haters be your elevators. Because the only way we can excel in life is that we go through something to make sure we appreciate the greatest thing. You will never appreciate the person that you're with unless you went through some struggle with the person before. You will never appreciate a job that you're at unless you went through a worse job before. What you have now, we should appreciate the things that we have now. Amen. Let your haters be your elevators. If Jesus the reason why you came to church, then focus on that. Let Jesus be the reason why you have to leave. Do not give the power and authority to anyone to, to control the emotions that you have in your life. Because that's the issue with us brothers and sisters, that we determine our decisions by the way we feel. Hmm. We determine our decisions by the way we feel. We should never let our heart guide us. Let your heart comfort you, but let your mind guide you. Amen. And so Hannah was moved, was even though she was provoked by, by Penina, saying, mocking us that she can't, she still went to God. She still went to the mountain. She still worshiped God because even though she was been hated, she was still a spiritual woman, a godly woman. I want you to understand this, that even though, even though Hannah was going through her struggle, she still stayed one with God because even though she may be barren, but she still had grace. Oh, amen. You may be, he, she may be barren, but she still had grace. Let me say this again. Even though she wasn't able to bear a son, she, was, she still had a wealthy husband. She still was a spiritual God. She still was able to do a lot of other things that a lot of women, women couldn't do. Because even though she was barren, she still had grace. You can be weak in certain areas and still have grace. Can we say amen to that? Uh, amen. So let's say about two people. One person can have a job and come to church and say, I am so blessed because I thank God he has given me a job. And maybe you're true, but then maybe, and maybe it's true, but there is someone else that's sitting there says, I don't have a job, but I thank God anyways because I still have grace that I see every day in my life. See, you got to understand is that we should never compare ourselves with somebody else because the grace that was designed for him was designed for him. Amen. So the grace that's designed for me is designed specifically for the situation that I am. I may be barren, but I still have grace. The reason why I say Hannah still have grace, because the Hebrew word for Hannah is Hannah, which means grace. She was born with grace. I may be weak in patience, 
but I'm strong in commitment and work. I may be weak in this area, but I'm strong in this area. My brother, sister, we need to magnify the strength, especially in the storm that you're going through. Instead of magnifying all the complaints, instead of magnifying all the weaknesses in our life, we can magnify the grace because even though I'm weak in certain areas, even though I'm barren in certain areas, I still have grace. The next thing we see is that Hannah was was appreciating everything, but even though she was provoked, she still wanted a child. And so she prayed to God every day. She prayed to God. And then the priest Eli came along and saw her on her knees. And she was pouring out her heart, speaking, uh, speaking through her heart, and her lips were moving. And Eli thought she was drunk. And she said, and he goes, Eli, uh, Hannah, get up. Get rid of, throw away all that drunkenness. You know, stop drinking. You know, go away and go, go sober and do something. You know, stop getting drunk. Listen to this. Eli thought she was drunk. A priest thought she was drunk and started judging her. Can I hear a man? A, preach, a preacher start, uh, started judging a member. Can I bring it deeper? See, just because you're in a position in a church, just because you're called a pastor or a minister or a deacon or an elder, it doesn't give you the right to judge. You know, a lot of people come to church and maybe they're not acting a certain way or being a certain way. But we got to understand, maybe they just got beat up from their husband at home. Or maybe something terrible has happened at home and they just want to come to God and, find, and try to find peace. But it's hard to find peace when people are provoking. My brothers and sisters, if we call our brothers and sisters brothers and sisters, so let's be brothers and sisters. But the one thing I love about this is because even though Hannah kept praying and praying and the demons and enemies were going against her, she was still faithful to God and God opened the womb and she was no longer barren. My brothers and sisters, I need to appreciate the grace I have now to move to the next dimension. See, Hannah appreciated everything that she had and she was ready to move to the next level. She believed that God, to God, that she was able to move to the next level. See, the door, when you see a door open in your life, my brothers and sisters, it's, it's to tell us that it is the end of your season to move into a next season. See, there are people that brought you into the season, but the people that brought you into the season may not help you move to the next season. So you got to keep moving forward and letting go of those people that are hindering you, hindering you to not to move to the next level. You have to keep moving forward because that's what faith is all about. I need to appreciate everything that God has given me now for me to receive what God has given is going to give me in the next level of my faith. Amen. Let your haters be your elevators. Amen. Let your haters be your elevators. I may be barren, but I still have grace. And for me to move to the next level or to the next dimension, not level, the dimension. Because with, with the level, you can move up to the next level, but you can still see the level you were before. Now, we've been moving to next levels, our faith. But now, my brothers and sisters, this season, it's not a level. It's a dimension. And the difference between a level and a dimension is that with the level, you can see the level before you. But with the dimension, you are entering into a new realm where you cannot see the old realm before. You're entering into a new atmosphere, new levels, new devils, but new blessings, new grace. Everything is moving into a different dimension. Your whole world becomes a new world. My brothers and sisters, the people that used to hurt you before cannot hurt you anymore because you're not just on another level you're in a new dimension I was born to have grace nowadays we're going through a new world and the devil is working real hard right now because his, he knows that his door is about to open what I mean is that he's, he's, he's about to God is about to allow him to reveal his true identity towards men, his true power. We are going to see a lot of things happening. 
And for us to actually study his scriptures and understand his word, we must go back to the basics real quick for some of us. Some of us, we got to understand that grace was always there. It's a gift to mankind. That is the beginning of our relationship to believe that God died and resurrected and, and baptized for us for those that couldn't be baptized. He died for us. He was baptized. He gave up everything for us. See, people think that we come to church, we give up our own life, and we think, and, and we say, as long as I'm here in church, you know, I could have been doing this, I could have been doing that, but I'm here in church. Just be happy that I'm here in church. We make it think that it, 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 it's, we, we, we make it think, a lot of people think that we should just be happy that I'm coming to church. A lot of members just say that, well, uh, I could have been at home, but just be appreciative that I come to church. Church is for us. Church is for people like us. The gospel is not us giving up everything for him. The gospel is, is, is him giving up everything for us. So we should appreciate everything that we have. We should appreciate that we have a sister at church. We should appreciate that we have ministers that love his people. People. We should appreciate the people that is around us and trying to uplift us. So we should never put anybody down. We should treat everybody the way we want to be treated. My brothers and sisters, this is a moment right now to make a decision in your life because the day is going fast and you have to make a decision. I'm not trying to say you're perfect. I'm not trying to be holy, holy. What I'm trying to say is to bring the real you out of you so that we can stand together and make a difference. This whole world is breaking. This whole world is breaking. And how many of us are actually making a stand, not out of your mouth, not out of your lips, but out of your actions? How many of us are actually walking with God? I may be born with grace. But I also am barren in certain areas. Let me change that for a second. I may be barren in areas, but I still have grace. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, Heavenly Father. Thank you, God, so much for your love and your guidance. I was born with grace. And I ask you, Lord, to please install these three, these three points to my brothers and sisters. To let our haters become our elevators. And then even though I'm barren in certain areas, I will still have grace. And I should appreciate everything that I have today so that I can move to the next dimension. In Jesus' name, we will serve in praise. Amen.